Hi, my friends, Lee Bricky here. And today we are talking about the new law that just came out here in Florida, HB 1203, which reigns in homeowners associations and makes them be more transparent on their websites. And this law went into effect July 1st, and it was passed by the legislature and signed in by Governor DeSantis. And I believe this law is going to be a really, really good thing for homeowners that live in homeowners associations. Also, I believe it's going to be good for real estate agents trying to help people that live in these HOAs sell their homes or rent their homes because finding paperwork, finding these documents you need has been a challenge because getting a hold of these people are getting them to email you back in about 50% of the cases is a nightmare. And I want to preface this by saying not all these HOAs are bad. Some are okay, but some of them have stretched out a little bit far over their skis. And with the fines and nitpicking that they do in some of these HOAs is making people crazy. So the legislature started researching this and found that they were overstepping their boundaries and this law went into effect. So we're going to talk about the major points of the law and then I'm going to leave a link to it in the information section below. And then also at the end of this video, you're going to want to stay for that because we'll turn to talk about the My Safe Florida Home Program that also just funded up again July 1st with $200 million where you can get $10,000 to upgrade your home like your roof or your windows, your garage door, so that your home can be hurricane ready. And also you might be able to see a little bit of a decrease in your homeowner's insurance. So this is a good program. It had some problems uh, last year with websites and getting funded. I know a few people though that did use it and were successful with it. They did have some hiccups in the beginning, but it seems like things are kind of moving along now. So we're going to talk about that at the end of the video. But before we get started, if you have not subscribed to this channel, go ahead and slap that subscribe button, ring that notification bell so you don't miss any of our real estate tips and tours. I really appreciate it and it helps the channel grow. With that said, let's get into it. So as of July 1st, HB 1203 has gone into effect, which is the new Homeowners Association law. Now, the first thing that is really important, I think, with this is that HOAs with over 100 homes have to put all of their covenants, rules, budgets, and other pertinent documents to the HOA on the website by January 1st, 2025. So this is going to make life a lot easier for buying and selling a home in an HOA and also renting a home because one of the problems with a lot of these HOAs is the information is not on their website. You have to get it from the real estate agent and the real estate agent has to get it from the HOA and emailing these HOAs and calling these HOAs is a nightmare because they don't get back with you on a timely basis. They're hard to deal with, not all of them, but, but at least 50% of them. And it makes it difficult for your agent to help you move your purchase or your sale to closing. And I've had deals just get hung up because of this. So all of that information will be on their website come January 1st, which is going to be a really big deal. The next thing is that the HOAs are also barred from banning residents from parking non-commercial personal or work vehicles on the property. First responder vehicles are also exempt. So you have not been able to park your truck in your driveway in many cases. You also have not been able to park your vehicle if it has any lettering in your driveway. And police cars, believe it or not, have not been able to park in their driveway. So police officers who drive their cars back and forth to work every day who protect us and who keep our neighborhoods safe 
are not allowed to park their cars in their driveway until now. And that's a great thing because I don't know about you, but the more cop cars that are in my neighborhood, the happier I am because it means my neighborhood is safe. And that's what we're looking for is having safe neighborhoods. So I think this is a great thing for the police officers, my son being one, and then also for the neighborhoods because what's a better deterrent for crime but a bunch of cop cars everywhere. The next one is HOAs will be barred from creating requirements or rules for the interior of the home that is not visible from the street, a neighborhood property, an adjacent common area, or a golf course. Now this has been a, a, a problem with condos because people wanna make changes inside their condo with maybe taking a wall down or, or you know, changing the kitchen location or something like that. And the condo association won't let them do it. So now they can, as long as they, it can't be seen from the street and, or from a neighbor, or if they live on a golf course, it can't be seen from the golf course, which is inside the house. So obviously it can't be seen. So this is a good rule and it stops the nitpicking on that situation. Also preventing homeowners from having a vegetable garden that can't be seen from the street, neighborhood property, or adjacent common area, or a com or, or community golf course. Again, a lot of these HOAs wouldn't let you put a, a garden in your backyard. And if you put one in there, they'd fine you. Now, I understand one of the reasons why is because people put in gardens and then they don't take care of them. And then the vegetables begin to rot. And then you end up with a bunch of rats and mice in your backyard. And that spreads to the other neighbors. With that being said, I have a garden. And most people that have gardens take care of their gardens or they wouldn't have a garden and they cook from their gardens. I have all my herbs and everything that grow in my garden, but my garden's behind my fence in my backyard. So no one should be able to tell me that I can have a garden or not have a garden in my backyard. So now you can, and the HOA can't stop you from doing that. And I know I would say a large majority of those HOAs were stopping people from having gardens in their backyard. So the next one is garbage cans. So many of these HOAs, including mine, would make you put your garbage can out the day of, so you had to put it out that morning before you went to work. And then they would make you take it in the day of when you came home. And if you put it out the night before, or you didn't bring it in till the next morning, then you would end up with a fine. And that's ridiculous. So now with this new law, you can put your garbage can out 24 hours before it's picked up and leave it 24 hours before after uh, the garbage picks up so that you're not rushed to take it out in the morning. You can take it out at night like I like to do. And then if for some reason you don't get home till very late or maybe you're not home till the next day, then you have time to bring your garbage can in or one of your neighbors could do it for you without ending up with a bunch of fines. So that, I think that's a, that's a big one too. And then leaving your holiday decorations up too long. So people were getting fined for putting them up too early and leaving them up too late. So now with that being said, HOAs do have rules on this and you need to re read them before you move into a property, which will be easier now because you can actually go online after January 1st and read all the rules and regulations before you sign a contract and find out what you need to know about the HOA. But they were fining people without notices. So a lot of people like to put their decorations up early and a lot of people take them down late. I know that we put them up early and then take them down late because we usually go away for two or three weeks around the holiday. So we're not back till mid January uh, from our vacation. And then one of the best parts of this law that I think is absolutely fantastic is that the new law also provides that HOA managers and directors must satisfy certain educational requirements approved by the Department of Business and Professional Regulations, including a four to eight hour yearly continued education course. So they have to get licensed just like I had to get licensed. So they're going to be able to learn about the rules and regulations and laws of the state 
that forbid them for doing certain things because these HOAs have really made it hard for some people to move in to the property and have held up multiple deals that I have done over the last 10 years. So they're going to teach these people about the rules and regs of real estate, just like they do me. And you're going to have to be licensed to be a director or be a manager of an HOA. So therefore, I believe it's going to make it a lot easier to get your home sold or rented or just dealing with these HOAs because many of them are oblivious to the laws and rules and regs of real estate in the state of Florida. For example, I had a client where she had an emotional support animal. We were trying to get her into a condo and the condo association strung it out three months saying that she had to submit everything to their attorney and that their board didn't meet till three months later. And she was not able to close on that condo because nobody wanted to wait three months to close, neither the seller nor her. So she had to move on. Now, this was reported to the state because it's discrimination and you can't discriminate on someone like that with an emotional support animal that's certified and you have a prescription from a psychiatrist. This animal becomes like a human being and it's, it's, it's a prescription. So they have a problem, but the fact that they made it so hard for us and didn't realize that they had this problem is the point. And so I believe that taking these classes is going to teach these HOA managers and these board members the rules and regs and laws of the state of Florida where it's going to make it easier to get your home sold again or rented and and also live in within these HOA rules and regs. So if you want to find out more about the law, again, I'll leave the link in the description section below. Go ahead, get down there and click on that and read through it if you want. But I think all of these rules and regulation changes, and there's more here than just what I read, are going to make a big difference and make it a lot easier for people to live in HOAs. And, and quite frankly, HOAs, again, aren't all bad. And another thing about HOAs is the big builders like Pulte, DeVosta, Coulter, these builders in Florida, uh, they, they build in HOAs. And they build a home much cheaper in the HOA than you could build outside of an HOA on a piece of property that you bought or a piece of property that the builder bought and built the house on because they're track homes and there's building so many that it brings the price down. So you get much more home for less money and everything's taken care of for you, like your lawn maintenance and your cable and your internet. And a lot of these communities have pools and playgrounds and uh, big clubhouses and gyms. And then you're getting all of that for three, 400 bucks a month with the HOA, which would cost you way more than that. So I think that living in HOA, I've been happy with, Dealing with some of these HOA managers and boards, I have not been happy with, but I think this law is going to make a big difference. Now, with that being said, let's talk about My Safe Florida Home. Now, last year, they had website problems, problems with people getting their applications done, problems with people getting their uh, inspections done, but they're, they're, they seem to have worked through that. They did have some issues when the website went up. There was a on the website, the email address, uh, the website address was wrong. And then, um, so that messed people up. And then the, when they fixed it, the website crashed because so many people hit it. Keep in mind, this is the government. So anytime they put up websites in the past, it's always been a problem. Florida has been pretty good about it, but you know, it's an issue. So anyways, everything seems to be working fine. So let me explain this to you a little bit. And basically they funded it up with $200 million. It started July 1st and you can go on and apply to get a wind mitigation report done on your home. So they send an inspector out and it's free. And then once you get the wind mitigation, then you can go put the application in for the $10,000 to upgrade your home. Now here's how it works out. So here's how it works out. 
from July 1st to the 15th is called Grant Group One. And those are low income homeowners age 60 plus. Then Grant Group Two starts July 16th through the 30th. And those are low income homeowners. Grant Group Three starts July 31st through August 14th. And those are moderate income homeowners age 60 plus. And then Grant Group Four starts August 15th through the 30th, and those are moderate income homeowners. And then grant group five starts August 31st, and that's everyone else that's eligible for the grant. Now, I don't know all the specifics on what puts you in each group, but when you go on and apply, it will tell you what group you fit in on. But you need to get that inspection done anyway, so you wanna do that right away. And again, there's only $200 million in it. It goes very, very quickly. If you've seen any of my videos where we just started July 1st um, with the hometown heroes that got funded again, and that money is moving out very, very quickly for first time buyers that haven't owned a home in three years. And if that's you and you want to learn more about that, you can leave a comment in the comment section on that one and I'll get back with you on it. But or you can just reach out and give me a call. My information's right there on the screen. With that being said, I hope you liked this video and I hope you got something from it. If you did like the video, please give me a thumbs up and like this video. I really appreciate it. it. Let's me know I'm making the right kind of content. Also, if you have not yet subscribed, go ahead and slap that subscribe button right there. Ring that notification bell so you don't miss any of our real estate tips and tours. And you can watch the next video right there on all the new construction that's going on in South Florida from St. Lucie to Palm Beach County because there's a ton of it and there's a ton of it coming. And we're going to be telling you all about that new construction over the next few months also. So be kind to each other and I'll see you in the next video.